I'm Carrie. I'm one of the dietitians from Duke Raleigh. And I'm Paige, and I'm also one of the oncology dietitians at Duke Raleigh. So we're going to do a cooking demo today, and all of our dishes are from the Old Ways website. And they are Mediterranean dishes. We know the benefits of the Mediterranean diet and how good it is for you. All the fresh foods and vegetables and a lot of plant foods come from the Mediterranean diet. So we have a fish dish for you, a salad, and a little dessert too. So let's get started. So first I'm going to make a, a cod recipe. Fish is very common in the Mediterranean diet that you eat a couple times a week. Um, it's a good source of protein, it's lean. And so we're gonna make a, a sun-dried tomato cod recipe. So from the store, you can get fresh fish and you really can use any sort of fish for this recipe. I really like cod, it's nice and flaky. If you're having any trouble chewing, it's nice and soft. So uh, they also sell these cods in the frozen section and they're really nice because they come in these individual packages. So they're frozen. I've let mine thaw in the refrigerator overnight, so I'm just going to cut these packages open. So how many ounces do you say that fish is? So this fish is probably four or five ounces. Remember, three ounces is about the size of a deck of cards. This is a little bit bigger than that, so I would say four to five ounces. Um, I have some parchment paper here. I'm going to lay my fish on. And if they're still a little frozen, that's okay won't hurt anything, but I would definitely let them thaw. Don't do completely frozen fish here. Open this up. It's kind of stuck. All right, we'll lay our fish here. And now we're gonna make the sun-dried tomato marinade, which is gonna give it all the flavor uh, next. So, I have some really good, uh, I just took some mushrooms and roughly chopped them. I'm going to add some sun-dried tomatoes and this is really what's gonna add the flavor to this. So can I use any mushrooms for this dish? In yes, particular? any mushrooms. The recipe calls for baby bella mushrooms, but whatever you've got will work. Uh, these are sun-dried tomatoes. You can find them in this any grocery store usually. Um, you might have to go to a little bit bigger store to find them, but they'll be with the canned tomatoes or with the Italian foods. Right, yeah. So, and then I also chopped some shallots. This is what shallots look like. They're a type of onion. If you can't find shallots or you don't have them at home, you can just use regular onions. Uh, but you peel them off like an onion and you just chop them like a regular onion. And so we're gonna add that in there. And then we're going to add some salt and pepper, basis for any sort of seasoning. Salt and olive oil, which is also one of the hallmarks of the Mediterranean diet, they use lots of olive oil. I'm gonna add that in here. Any particular olive oil that you use? Um, I know that some of them can be at used at higher temperatures or makes the virgin okay, just whatever I have at home. Yeah, whatever you've got at home will work. Um, I also have a golden balsamic vinegar and vinegar adds a little bit of tartness and really you can use any kind of vinegar, um, cooking vinegar that you have at home. Add that in here. And then also fish, what pairs really well with fish is lemons. So I'm gonna take my lemon, give it a little roll to get all the juices flowing. Add some fresh lemon juice in here. You can squeeze it in. I have this nifty juicer. I'm just going to put this in and squeeze. Keeps the seeds out of there. I'm just going to keep holding my spoon awkwardly and see if I ever go. I turned the chocolate down to a low. Oh, okay. Here. 
then I'm just gonna stir this. This is gonna be a nice marinade. You can always make this the night before too. And uh, you know, any marinades that you're making um, that just helps the flavor really marinate in itself. <laughs> it just tastes so much better sometimes when it sits a little longer. So I took some parchment paper here on my baking sheet. You can use parchment paper or you can also use foil. And I'm just gonna lay one piece of fish per sheet. And then I'm going to take my sun-dried tomato mix and just pile it on there. Just make sure you use it all up. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil on the fish first. Help it stick a little bit better. Right, and then just pile it on. Make it does not have to be neat by any means. You want a piece of foil or parchment paper big enough that you're going to wrap all this up. So I'm going to pile it in here and just use it all up. Because these count as your vegetables too. You're killing two birds with one stone here. All right, and then I'm going to wrap these up. Almost like a sandwich. It's gonna help all, keep all that flavor in. And then place it on my baking sheet. You don't need to spray your baking sheet before. And you're gonna preheat your oven to 500 degrees. So these are gonna go cook quick and fast. Wrap the so 500 degrees, put them in for three to five minutes one side, and then just flip the whole pack over and cook the other side. So we're going to do that. And then when they're all finished, they're going to be, your kitchen's going to smell amazing. So they're going to look like this and we're just going to take them out and they're ready to eat. And all that, those mushrooms will be cooked down a little bit. Gonna be beautiful. Oh, that smells so good. Yes. So let's say I'm not used to cooking fish, mm -hmm. and I'm concerned that it's is this, is this fish done? Right. So how will I know? So you can use your thermometer, your home mm -hmm. thermometer, and cook it to at least 145 degrees. Okay. That is your definite fail safe that you know it's ready. So this can definitely get a little messy, but. I promise it'll be good. That looks beautiful. So, and then it also, I have some fresh lemons here. And if you just want to squeeze these on, I'll add a little bit more flavor and a really fresh tasting. So, all right. Fantastic. We got our dish one done. All right. I'm going to let Paige Amazing show you. Done. So, now we're going to get into our salad and grain dish. So, I am cooking a, well, actually, I'm putting together a farro salad. So farro it is an ancient grain that has been around, cultivated for more than 10,000 years, first noted to be in Mesopotamia. And so farro is actually an Italian word that just means ancient grain. And it's not just one grain, it's three different grains. And so what we're using today, it is an emmer farro, and that is a farro medio, meaning that is more of a medium grain. There is a, a larger grain and a smaller grain farro. But for the most benefits of protein and fiber, you want to use at least a medium or a large grain farro. So when you look it up, um, it'll say, some definitions will say they pronounce it farro, some say farro. So of course, last night when I said farro, my husband said, the most ultimate dad joke and said, is it Ramesses the second or is it Tutankhamen? And so then I had to uh, sigh very, very loudly. But I'm calling it Faro, you can call it Faro. So with this, it starts out and it looks just like a wheat grain. So you can't really see here, but it's very, very small and it cooks up very large. It puffs up so like a puffed wheat. Uh, it takes longer to cook than a usual whole grain that you're used to. So cooking a brown rice or a quinoa, maybe that's somewhere between, you know, 15 and 20 minutes. This took me 35 to 40 minutes to cook this farro. And oh, that good fiber. Yes, lots of fiber. It is very delicious, chewy grain. And then after I, cook, I put it on the this sheet and let it cool in the refrigerator because I'm putting it in a cold salad. You could also use it for 
a warm dish. So if you want to have a warm grain salad, some people will even use it sort of like oatmeal in the morning and maybe they'll put fruit in there, maple syrup, maybe a little bit of yogurt. So think about it like you would any other whole grain. So because this is a wheat grain, it does contain gluten. So it is not gluten free, uh, but some people that are gluten sensitive, so not someone with celiac disease, but if you are sensitive to gluten, this does have less of the gluten protein than a newer, more conventional wheat grain. So you could try it if you wanted to, but if you do have that gluten sensitivity, I would just recommend using something like quinoa or brown rice if you wanted to put this in the salad. So I've cooked my farro, it has been chilled, and I have a mixed, baby mixed green salad mix here wash it at home you could use whatever you want the recipe originally calls for arugula and that gives it that nice peppery bite but i just like having a little bit of everything or maybe if greens are too bitter for you you could just use a baby spinach so i'm gonna make the dressing so like all good dressings you want to start out with the best ingredients that you can find so i've got a nice dijon mustard just a little itty bitty teaspoon will squeeze out for me. I know you will. And then a little bit of grade A maple syrup. You could also use honey if you wanted to. So just a teaspoon. And then a lemon, lots of citrus in Mediterranean diet, right? Yeah. So because I always get seeds, <laughs> I'm using a strainer. No, yeah, yeah, if you don't have a juicer, that's, that's right. That's right. I have my teeny tiny strainer. So I'm going to use about two tablespoons. So it depends on how juicy your lemon is. It may take anywhere from half to three quarters or all of your lemon. And also, if you wanted to like make it really pop with the citrus flavor, you can zest some of the outside of the lemon and put that in the dressing as well. So may I borrow your salt and pepper? Yeah. Hello. Okay. So probably want to use about at least a, you really want a salt and pepper to taste, but also the secret, the reason why salads taste so much better when you buy them somewhere in a restaurant or prepared because they're always seasoning those greens. So you want to pepper and salt the greens as well. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of people and they're concerned, they're like, well, I don't salt at home because, you know, I'm not using added salt. Salting at home is not really something that we worry about as far as nutrition. Mostly those hidden salts that are in processed foods or when you buy um, fast foods, those are the sodiums that we really worry about. When you're using it at home, you can control it. So you want to use salt to its advantage, make things taste great for you. And salt is salt is salt is salt. I always get people ask, you know, should I use sea salt? Should I use Himalayan pink salt? Should I right. use black salt? Right. Iodized salt. It's all sodium chloride at the end of the day, right? It gives you the same amount of sodium. It's yeah. just really your taste preference. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil, about a quarter of a cup. So there's a lot of different ways that you could do this at home. I'm just, so I have my teeny tiny baby whisk that I borrowed from my daughter. So you could just do it in a bowl, back and forth motion, back and forth, back and forth. Or you could put it in a glass mason, mason jar, of course, with the top, shake it up until you emulsify. Uh, I also have used a milk frother when I'm in a pinch and I need to make something really quick. You could put it in a blender, like if you're making a large batch of this dressing, but just a back and forth, back and forth motion. So, you know, you could do figure eights, but really just back and forth, back and forth. It's going to get you nice and emulsified. So, and as always, taste, taste, make sure that the salt is where you want it, the pepper is where you want it. But do that at home, not when you're serving it to your friend. <laughs> So I've got a nice, beautiful, light, lemony dressing. Sounds delicious. So I'm going to put this over my greens. 
And then I'm going to take about half of my farro. But really, you can put as much as you want in there. And you can use other different grains for this, too. Oh, right? absolutely. Absolutely. Greens and grains. Greens and grains, yeah. yeah. This could be a whole meal in itself, really. It's yeah. very hearty. Absolutely. And if you wanted to make a grain bowl, mm -hmm. you would just put the grains at the bottom and then just layer whatever you want. I've also toasted some pecans, pecans, however you prefer to say them. So I put them in the oven at 350 for about eight to 10 minutes. But whenever you are roasting nuts, do not leave because that is the secret. That is when they will always burn yeah. as soon as you leave the kitchen. But if you have a nut allergy, you can use something like pumpkin seeds or sesame seeds if you prefer to do that. Or you can just omit the nuts, but I like having it because I like that crunch. And you definitely want to toast them first because that is going to bring out just the best flavor in your nuts or your seeds. And also, so I'm going to chop up an apple to put in there because I like the nice crisp and tartness. Whatever kind of apple you prefer. I have a honey crisp. Um, also, what would be great, especially right now in the spring, if you had some nice strawberries. So... My cutting techniques. I'm just going to try not to chop off my finger. <laughs> so have your apple, whatever shape you prefer. So let's see, instead of strawberries, you can have blueberries. And you can also add some dried fruit. So this recipe also had um, golden raisins. So okay. if you wanted to have that, or maybe some dried apricots. I mean, really, it's just seasonal. Whatever you prefer. And dried fruit. That's right. It's always ready for yeah. you. It's always there. I saw something in the grocery store I've never seen last night. Uh, dried pears. Oh. I've never seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, like a pear jerky. So, yeah. 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 It's true. Yeah. It's true. My roughly chopped weird apples. <laughs> and then my last part is I'm going to put some goat cheese in here. So, again, if you, you can put whatever or omit whatever you want to from this salad. I like goat cheese because it's nice and creamy and tangy. You could also use a feta. Mm -hmm. So, especially like a nice sheep's milk feta. gives that nice, creamy, bitter, nice fat kind of round out the flavors um, but if you're vegan you could put in a vegan cheese mm -hmm. or maybe just not put in cheese at all mm -hmm. so I'm just gonna use my hands mix everything together and then I will just kind of garnish with my goat cheese that was beautiful all the different colors in there and there I just there's so many fried ingredients in that salad mm-hmm and same with even on our fish too, the red. Um, also, chop your fish with some basil. Add some green in there and some flavor. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. And if you got any fresh herbs at home, mm -hmm. some basil. You could put oregano in here, um, some parsley, whatever you want to throw in there. I'm just putting in the rest of the farro. I'm just gonna go for it. So, and yeah, this and the farro has got. So for every quarter of a cup you eat, there is five grams of fiber. And six grams of protein. So, really? yes, and it's really high in magnesium, it's high in niacin, which is a B vitamin. And so, all those colors are really popping. Yum. For all the professionally trained chefs out there, I apologize. <laughs> we're, we're doing our best as home cooks. <laughs> yeah, this is reality. And just goes to show you, you don't have to have a choice of food. It's true. It's true. We're really assembling a lot of this stuff. They just make us take like eight hours of food science classes in, in nutrition. 
That's right. Right. You haven't measured anything. Right. 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 <laughs> exactly. Like I'm doing the best to eyeball it. So yeah. I make salad dressing all the time at home. So that would be like my best tip. It's so easy to make a vinaigrette. Yeah. So vinegar, acid of your choosing. If you didn't have lemons at home, you could use a nice vinegar, a balsamic, a red wine, a white wine, uh, even apple cider vinegar if you have that. Yeah. And then just put in whatever kind of flavors you want. Mustard is a nice emulsifier, so I usually just always use that. All right, and here is my salad. That looks great. This meal is definitely going to fill us up. All right. All right, and time for the figgy figs. Time for dessert. So we have a really simple, delicious, high fiber dessert. So uh, we have some dried figs here. And what we're first going to do, we're making chocolate covered, dark chocolate covered figs. Um, high fiber also has some protein in here so we're going to take some almonds and just like Paige said when you toast your nuts be very careful don't walk away because uh, they will burn very quickly I'm notorious yeah. for that yes. multitasking so you're just going to take just some unsalted plain almonds and really you could use any sort of nut here walnuts would work great cons would work great and just put them on a baking sheet unlined no oil and then toast them for about four minutes at 350 degrees. And then we're gonna take those out and then we're gonna take our figs. These are dried figs available all year long and just, they come in all different shapes and sizes. And then we're just gonna cut a hole in the middle and you'll be able to see they have some seeds in there, also high fiber. Um, so just cut those open, cut a slit in there. And then you're gonna take your toasted almonds and just slide them in there. Tuck them inside and then just close them up. Actually, before you close them up, we're gonna take a little orange zest. So wash your orange off. Just make sure there's nothing hanging out on the outside. This is a zester, so it's like a mini, little mini grater. And then this is gonna add a little bit of flavor. So you just take this and zest over your, all of your figs. And then we're also gonna take a little bit of ground cloves. Ooh, add a little flavor. It's gonna make it a really good year. Yes. And so also just add a little bit over those. All right, now close them up. And then we're gonna put them back on our baking sheet. And we're going to cook them for 10 minutes. Um, so again, no oil, just straight on the baking sheet. Put those in the oven, 10 minutes. We're gonna take them back out. And then while that's cooking, we're gonna make a double boiler. So this is to help melt our chocolate. You don't need to buy a double boiler. You're gonna make one at home. So just take um, a pan of water, put about two or three inches of, of water in there and it's gonna to start to boil. And all that heat is going to help melt our chocolate very gently. Um, I prefer this rather than the microwave method yeah. because the microwave <laughs> method you hit a point where you just get it too, too right. warm and it separates and it kind of ruins your chocolate. So basically I just took a dark chocolate bar from the grocery store. Um, it doesn't have to be special baking chocolate, just one that you would eat. And I put it into, this is a, um, a heat safe glass bowl. If you also have a metal bowl, that'll work too. And just be then, careful if you got that metal bowl. While yeah, it's going to be it. hot yes. while you're touching it. Um, even now when I pull that steam up, be very careful. Yeah. Uh, so this has been just slowly, it's a beautiful, nice melted chocolate. It's dark chocolate. Got some more phytonutrients in it. Yes. I'm going to add a in there. Yes. And I added a little bit of cinnamon just for some flavor. Oh, I love that. I love that. And then I'm going to stir this up a little bit. And then I'm going to take my baked figs. And then I'm just going to dip these in 
and then you would put them on a piece of parchment paper just to let them sit and harden. And I actually put mine into the refrigerator after I let them, after I had them all dipped, just to speed the process along. And you'll probably have some chocolate left over. <laughs> What a problem to have. Yes! What else can we do with this chocolate? You'll probably have some almonds left over. So, just throw them in there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Give them a stir. And the same thing, just pull them out and put them onto a piece of parchment paper. And then I would just put that into the uh, refrigerator too to get that chocolate hardened up. So, have a nice, healthy treat. So... It's like you're eating dessert, but not really. Mm -hmm. so cool. it's it's yes, it's a healthy dessert. Fiber, protein, and of course, the dark chocolate um, is going to have less sugar than a milk chocolate. Yeah, so. absolutely. So. All right, well, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Um, ask to meet with your dietitians at your local cancer center. We'd be happy to help with any questions you have. Uh, through survivorship, maybe you're still in treatment and you're having trouble with any side effects of your treatment. Mm -hmm or you're finished treatment and you have some lingering side effects and you just need some help and tips and tricks with those, we'd be happy to help. Right, and there's all kinds of information and misinformation, so we're happy to clear up any of these issues for you and, and just have fun experimenting with cooking. Absolutely. And remember to eat colorfully. Absolutely. So, thank, thank you all. So